In part 1 of this video, we found out that we could solve equations with two radicals by isolating one radical at a time. In this problem, we can easily isolate the first radical by adding the second radical, the square root of negative 16x minus 12, to both sides. When we do, we get the square root of 1 minus 8x equals 1 plus the square root of negative 16x minus 12. Now that that first radical is alone, we can clear it by squaring both sides. Square and square root are inverses, and we're left with 1 minus 8x. On the right side, we technically have a binomial. We square the first term, 1 squared is 1. In the middle, we have the product twice. 1 times the square root plus 1 times the square root is 2 times the square root of the negative 16x minus 12. Then, we square the last term, and squaring a square root will simply give you what's inside, negative 16x minus 12. Let's clean up that right side by combining like terms. We now have 1 minus 8x equals negative 11 plus 2 times the square root of negative 16x minus 12 minus 16x. Once we've solved for the first square root, now we can clear the second square root by isolating the term with that radical. We can add 16x to both sides and add 11 to get it alone. 12 plus 8x equals 2 times the square root of negative 16x minus 12. We have the option to get rid of the 2 in front, and we can divide every term by 2 without having to worry about ugly fractions. So let's do that. This gives us 6 plus 4x equals the square root of negative 16x minus 12. Clear a square root by squaring both sides. 6 squared is 36. 24 and 24 is 48x plus 16x squared equals negative 16x minus 12. We can move any everything to one side by adding 16x and adding 12. Putting everything in the correct order, we end up with 16x squared plus 64x plus 48 equals 0. We have a common factor of 16. Pulling that out first gives us x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And finally, factoring what's left to x plus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. To find our solutions, we make x plus 3 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Solving those equations by subtracting 3 and subtracting 1 gives us x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. However, before we say those are our final solutions, we will still need to check these answers to be sure they work in the original problem. Both of these answers do not end up working. In part 3 of this video, we will take a look at checking these two solutions, x equals negative 3, whoops, and x equals negative 1 in the problem to see which one works and which one does not work.